All right, so where we left off, we had created an animation in Photoshop from all of our merged assets into a neat bundle of layers. So here we have a blank white layer. I can get rid of that. Oh, I actually needed that, never mind. And I have um, layers one through 27, right? And when I play them through, I can adjust the timing. I can play with the in-betweens. I can be happy with the animation. Now, do we have full control of this? At this point, we can go back and say, well, I want certain ones to last a little longer. I want to play with the, uh, the relative lightness or brightness of certain frames. I mean, there's lots of little adjustments, but basically it's going to look kind of glitchy, but it's going to tell our story, right? And that's how GIF animations work. Right now, this is in Photoshop, so this is millions of colors. So if you zoom in, you're going to see all those little variations in pixels. And the only problem with playing it in Photoshop is there's a processing lag because there's millions of colors, especially as I zoom in to show each pixel much bigger, it kind of slows down the playing of it. So the only way to really get a sense of, of how smooth your animation is, is to convert it into an online format, which is the GIF format. So to do that, we said file, export, save for web legacy. Now that is very different than just saying file, save, and then selecting GIF as the format. Because if you do that, if you just say file, save, and then GIF as the format, it will just flatten it all to one image and limit it to 256 colors. So we have to do it as a save for web because that brings up this um, animation script window, which will help us choose the settings to simplify the GIF. Here it's selective. And here are the pixels it needs to play through all of my different frames. So it's basically a slideshow of all 27 layers, right? And you can see it's bigger than it needs to be. If I want to see it smaller, I can say that. If I want to preview it, I can click. But basically, we want to save it as a GIF to the desktop, right? So you can see it's plenty big, good for high def screens. This is eight by eight inches by 150 pixels per inch. Okay, so if all that looks good, come on. then we hit save, we save to the desktop, and we have a new type of file. This is the first time in the class we have a GIF file. And remember, it's always good to put your name in your file name. Now you can, you can test that file by opening it in a web browser, right? But that's what you're going to put up into PhotoBucket. And I've already done that. So if we go to PhotoBucket, let's see. There it is. I've already uploaded two things. So once we have these two things created, I've got my storyboard sketch, just the rough plan, and then I have my GIF animation. But notice there are three things we're going to submit. So I've numbered my storyboard sketch, SP20 Carl 1, and my GIF animation, SP20 Carl 3. Because if we're going to put our animation into a print portfolio or even into a website, it's good to show one additional step for animation, and that's a refined storyboard. So looking at this example, we have the sketch. The second thing we're gonna upload is a really clean storyboard of finished frames from our animation. And that helps us see kind of the intended story a little bit better. So I'm gonna show you how to make that. Now here's the thing, you'll see on the GIFs, they can look a little um, pixelated, a little grainy, and that's because it's limited to only 256 colors. That's how it saves memory. But when we have this, the refined storyboard, we want millions of colors. We don't want that to be grainy or pixelated. It doesn't need to be. And then the other thing that, that GIFs sometimes do is they'll slip a row of pixels. 
just one pixel over. I call it pixel slippage, and that's not ideal either. So we're going to use the PSD file of our animation in order to make this so that it looks as high quality as possible and can be printed for your portfolio. So, so we do that by going back to our, our stage PSD, not our assets. We're done with the assets file. Unless we wanted to change our animation, we're done with our assets file. But now that I've outputted my GIF, I want to show you, I guess, one other way that you can save your video of your animation before we move on with millions of colors. Uh, on timeline here, this is a frame by frame animation. If you change it to, to a, uh, an editing bay way of looking at it, you can go to the window options within the timeline and then you can say, render video. Now render video will make it a video file at full resolution and with millions of pixels, but it won't loop and it won't play automatically online. So this would be if you, you know, wanted it as an MP4 file to play on a tablet or to play on a laptop. And so it's, I recommend you just do that for your own good because the GIF works great, but it's very limited in terms of its pixels, right? So if you want a high def version of version of your animation, this is a way to do that. Okay, while that's rendering, I am going to kind of talk you through these steps. Sometimes all these layers we made in frames for our stage, sometimes they're more complicated than the actual frames we made. So for instance, the, um, the frames I made out of this had in-betweens. I set it to reset, right? So I created more frames than I have layers. And what we want to do is take every animation frame, no matter how long or short we're showing that image, and we want to turn it into one flat, 100% opaque layer. And I think of it like a deck of cards. You know, you can make a flip book by drawing each, each image and then flipping through it. Well, you, you can actually hire certain printers you can give them a set of 52 images and they'll print an individual image on the back of each card, right? Of like a playing card. So if we did that, then we could use that deck of playing cards as our flip book, right? But we need 52 separate individual images. So I'm gonna quickly render this. Just all the defaults work well. So, We have to go back to the storyboard view for that. And then instead of making frames from our layers, we're going to make layers from our frames. We're going to swap it. And so it's just like making a flipbook, printing it out. And it's a good step for all of you, especially if you did any kind of animating on the stage where you added little effects or, or faded you know, different layers together. Where did my rendered video end up? I'm curious. Not there yet. All right. So what I'm going to do is go back to the storyboard view. And when you when I look at the storyboard options, you see there's 32 frames here, but I only have 27 layers. So that means there's a bunch of extra playing cards I want to print. So in order to do that, I click on my topmost layer. And then I go to the uh, animation options or to the timeline options. And I say flatten frames into layers. So not make frames from layers, but flatten frames into layers. And now I have 32 100% opaque normal layers that are now not called layers anymore. They're called frames. Then underneath frame one, I have my old layers. And I'm going to go ahead and select them all and delete them. So now I have just frame one through 32. So my, my deck of cards is only 32. If you have 80 frames in your animation, you want a deck of cards that's 80 with an individual image on, on all of them. Then I'm going to hold down shift, select all of the frames in my timeline, drag them down to the trash, and then hide the timeline. Don't need that anymore. Then immediately, 
I'm going to file and save as a new name, right? Because I don't want to overwrite that stage that outputted my animation. So now this is going to be Carl Assignment 5 Refined Storyboard. Okay, now that I have this refined storyboard file that I'm working on, I don't need to worry about breaking my animation. So now I need to turn it into a clean storyboard like this. And honestly, the hardest part about this is just the layout, like getting it to be centered and getting the gutters to be even, the borders to be even, so that it reads really straightforward. So we're gonna do our first kind of layout within Photoshop and it's a little technical, you know, it'd be better to use InDesign for this and there are better programs for layout, but to keep it all in one program, we're going to see how we can do it in Photoshop. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is think about what is the middle of my animation. So if I look back to my assignment and I look back to my sketch, and you might have your sketch in front of you, I want to think, what is that middle moment? And I don't need to go to Photo Bucket for that. I can just go to my assignment for that. And if you haven't uploaded your storyboard sketch yet, definitely get that done so we can acknowledge the, uh, the critique deadline. So right in the middle, I have the eyes bulging for my character. So if I have 32 frames, it would make sense that that frame is somewhere in the middle. So maybe 16, right? But it looks like that frame's a little bit earlier. There we go. So we have the eye bulge happening there. So I'm gonna decide that that frame, I'm gonna mark it green, is my middle frame. So once you've decided your middle, I want you to use your, your move tool with your rulers and drag guides all the way around it. Then I want you to go to image size and confirm that you have a perfect square. So if not, you can uncheck the um, chain link and make it a perfect square, eight by eight by 150, because we want precision, right? Then, I am going to grow the paper around it so it's print quality. So I'm going to say image canvas size, and I'm going to make this 30 inches wide by 40 inches tall. And the canvas extension color will be just a, a blank checkerboard, right? But then I'm going to go to the bottom frame, the bottom layer, right? Make a new layer, drag it to the bottom, and fill that edit fill with 100% white, just so I can see the paper clearly and I'm not distracted by the checkerboard. Okay, now this is where the layout comes in. Because I grew the canvas size around my center frame, I know it's perfectly centered. I put the guides there, but if I just start putting other frames, like frame one, I'll deal from the bottom of the deck right there, and then the next one here, it's not gonna have that even spacing between, right? So what I'm going to do is go to view, show, grid. And the shortcut for that is command apostrophe. Now remember, we saved this at eight by eight inches and we're viewing our rulers with inches. So what I want to do now is use these inch guides to bring a guide one inch from each side of my center frame. And because the guide, the grid is showing, it will lock the guides in place. So then when I hit command apostrophe, I can see that I have a nice little template here. That template allows me to take frame one, use the move tool with auto select layer not selected. So I'm dealing from the bottom of my deck of cards now and I put frame one there. And then frame two is zoomed in. And I can decide, okay, which frame two do I want? 